Hey there, it's Erica from Ever Educating, and this channel is all about teaching tips for new college instructors. So if that interests you, go ahead and subscribe below. Today's video is specifically about the EdTech tool EdPuzzle, which is free, you know, for limited options, but then you might find that your actual school has a pro code that you can enter to get, you know, the full features. Or you can pay for it individually if you want to, too. But basically, Edpuzzle is a resource where you can make your video lecture, lectures or lessons more interactive for your students by inputting questions throughout the video. And so I'll show you what I mean now by heading over to my screen. There's three different plans that you can choose from, and one of them is free. So keep in mind, though, that the free basic plan, it comes with plenty of videos for you to be able to make your own, as well as you can add your own videos but you're limited to 20 videos only in your storage. So that can be obviously one video a week for the whole semester, but if you're teaching different classes that obviously wouldn't work as well, you'd be more limited to how many you can do per class. And if you wanted to use it for another semester, you'd have to e erase the videos and then start from scratch. So you might wanna see if you have a pro code already available in your school. And if not, obviously you can decide whether or not you wanna pay for the app or not. Once you create an account and you go up to the top right here and you click on your name, you're going to end up on this page, which is your profile. And so they'll ask you for some information here about yourself. But what I want to point out is for school, you know, I've put in the school I currently attend and work for, Illinois State. And it tells you if your school has a, has a pro account ready for you. And so once you get the upgrade code, you apply it and then you can go ahead and upgrade without having to pay for it yourself. So definitely do put in your school and you can see very easily whether or not it has a pro status. Of course, you can also change your plan when you need to. I currently have the basic free one, but obviously there are, other, there are two other options as well. You can also have certain settings that you do and you can choose those here too. Now, if you go ahead and go to content, you're gonna see this screen and so the home screen curriculum illinois state my content and then popular channels and so my content currently i only have one video and that's not a video i created from scratch it's a video that i found over here under popular channels when i searched for you know literary terminology right um but what you can do is once you find the video you can add specific questions that you want to it and so i'm going to go ahead and click here and I'll show you what I mean. So I ended up shortening the video because I didn't need the repetitive nature of it because I teach young adults, not children. And so here it's only a minute, 46 seconds long. But when you're watching it, you eventually get to this point and it stops and it asks you a question. Which term is defined by the use of the words like or as when making comparison? And that's obviously simile. You click submit. And then you keep you, the video keeps going because I got the question right. Okay, so you click continue, you really and it continues on. It tells you more information I about these two words. So you get to the end of the video. Which of the following answers are metaphors? You can choose more than one, right? So the the questions don't have to just be one correct answer. You could also do short answer questions, but of course those aren't automatically graded. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to content. You can go ahead and search for content. So for example, if you were having a lesson in the civil rights movement, you can search for that. And you'll see here, there's ones from Edpuzzle that already have questions attached to them. And then ones just from YouTube that are blank that you can do yourself. And obviously you can click see more. But let's say we click this one. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and mute it. Or put it very very low and then you'll see it playing and so once you figure out if this kind of video is for you I like this type where it's like a whiteboard type of look to it when um, the teacher is doing a voiceover of information so you can see here you know do you want to edit it do you want to copy it assign it or share it so assign it obviously is you want to sign it as is with no questions that wouldn't really make sense but you can do it that way um, in my case, we're going to go ahead and go into edit. So when you have the edit, you can cut out parts that are unneeded for your purpose. 
You can do a voiceover yourself where you record yourself talking over the video, right? Um, or you can just add the questions that you want to add. So it can be multiple choice, open-ended, or you can just add a note, right? Um, and so we're going to go ahead and stick to the questions part. So we'll start watching it. The civil rights movement began after World War II and generally refers to the 1950s and 1960s. Today we will look at several events from the civil rights movement. First, we will look at Rosa Parks and the Montgomery bus boycott. In 1955, most buses in the South were segregated. Segregation was a system that separated people by their race in public places. Under this system, white passengers sat... Okay, so I've paused it here, and then I'm going to go ahead and add a multiple choice question. So you type in your question. And then you type in your answers. You could also add more than two. And then you're going to want to say which one is correct and which one's incorrect. And you save it. Once you do that, it shows you how it will look, right, and what the right answer is, and when it appears on the video. Okay, so once you're like, okay, yes, I like how that looks, you can obviously edit it or delete it if you decide not to use it, but then you can continue. Once you've added all the questions you want, you might decide, you know, having watched your whole video, you know, I don't need the last 41 seconds of it. You can go back to cut, and you can go ahead and cut it however much you'd like. So once you've done that, do you need a voiceover, yes or no? Obviously you can choose whether or not to take that approach. But you'll see here that changes are saved automatically. On the left will be the list of questions that you're including in the video. So once you've done everything you need to, the cut and the questions, the voiceover, if you'd like, you click finish. And now it's you're the author of this particular video because you've made changes to it. So I kept it easy, added the one question and cut it a bit. But now you can kind of see information, other versions of this same video. And but you can assign your own or you can edit it again, delete it, whatever the case may be. When you go to content and then my content, you'll see this new video that you've created. Since that was just an example. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. So as you can see here, you just click on it and you can do these various things. So maybe you want to duplicate it and you want to add different questions to it this time around. You can do that very easily. You can organize your videos into folders by class, for example. But in this case, I'm going to delete it. And so that's Ed Puzzle in a very simple nutshell. Again, you can go here and you can see videos already in Edpuzzle that people have already edited by adding questions and comments and whatever the case may be in case you want to use them exactly like it rather than creating your own. Uh, but then you could also see just videos that are on YouTube, Khan Academy, etc, etc, and decide, okay, this video is great. I'm going to go ahead and edit it and make it my own for my particular students. Now remember, the free plan only allows you to have 20 videos stored. Um, one thing else to consider is if you go to my content, you can add content here and you can upload your own video or create one. And again, here is where also you, where you create folders by clicking this add con content button. Now, I showed you how to create videos for your classes and you can obviously easily share them using that share button. But if you go up here to my classes, here's where you can add your Google Classroom or you could add a class more manually. So you can enter the name, so let's say English 101, add a description, so composition, what type, right? So classic. If you can't live without videos in your lessons, this class app is for you. When your students log in or sign up, you get the most analytics Edpuzzle has to offer. Store your students' progress across all your videos in one place. 
So you can decide if you want to do a classic or you want to do it open. I'm going to go ahead and do it like this and click create class. At this point, you can have, you know, what your assignments that are due, no due date and students. So let's say you go here to students. You can invite students to your classroom. You could also lock the classroom. OK, um, once you have all your students in it. So unlock. When you click invite. OK. Um, do you have parental consent? So if your students are under the age of 18, mine aren't, but obviously you would go ahead and answer these questions. So in my case, the answer is no, and I would continue. Okay. So, and then your students can join a class by entering a class code. Here it is, or visiting this link or share it through mail. So you can copy the link, add it to your LMS site and have students sign into the class. So once you do that, you can go to your content, Let's go to mine in particular, click on it, assign it. I'm going to assign it to English 101 to all of my students. When does it start? When does it do? Can students skip throughout the video or not? Are CCs being used here? Okay, and then you can go ahead and assign it. And again, you just choose what class you want to put it in and enter in this information. So let's say today, when is it due? Okay, preview the video in student mode. So you can go ahead and watch it. You can see that there's two questions, but you can't see the questions yet until you get to that point of the video. If you go back to my classes, you see the videos, when the start it is, and how many have turned it in. And so you can obviously track your students' answers once you invite them and have them complete this particular assignment. So if you click, if you click on the assignment, you could edit the name if you want to. You can see here how, the student name, how much they've watched, what their grade is, when they last watched it, right? And so on and so forth. You can download the grades once you have them all there. So you can see them all in one file. And you can go to questions and you can see, you know, how many they got right. So there definitely is some data here that you can use very easily once you have the students submitting their responses. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and delete the assignment because it's not a real one. And go from there. So that's how my classes is used. Obviously, the gradebook here is once they have a turned in their assignments, you can see the gradebook here and see the data as well. So those are all three of the main elements here for you to get a sense of. So definitely, if you know, you're doing a lot of video in your classes, go ahead and make sure that you consider if you want to add this element of engagement to the video element of your course. If you found this video helpful, please do click the like button below and let me know. If you have any questions or comments, the comment section is there for you. And here are a couple of videos that you might find of interest as well. I'll see you next time with a new video.